Cool. So, hello everybody. Um, I'm Vince, and that's Julian. Um, um, I don't know if uh, oh, for those um, who have been last year in LAG and the years before in Graz and Kassruhe, uh, I've been playing at the Linux Sound Night with my band. It was the cello thing with um, electronic music. Um, and this year I re reset up all the the, the setup actually, um, uh, and I want to show you that first and then we will go on uh, to the heart of the of this setup actually that's super book it's um, written by Van Puy. he's not here he's in France but um, Julian and I we we add some really really interesting features for life um, and yeah maybe I just start so it's the the ID now is for for playback only. So we are not going to record. Um, I don't know if you know something like this view and some hardware stuff like this. So um, you can put some clips on it here, and you can play them, and they are synced all together. It's it's very similar to like what uh, Harry I think was. Like before, like you just bind the clips to the uh, pads there, right? Exactly. So maybe I just start with a song and um, I explain what I'm doing. So I think it's the best, the best way. So I don't know if some music are coming. It's not. Yeah, it's not actually. Okay. Okay, so you can see what's happening. Cool. So that's super buckle, and um, we will go on later and explain more on this. Um, that's the heart. It's the, for the arranging part, so you can um, you can change on the fly the parts and um, the different uh, parts of each instrument. So the bass drum, the bass, um, and all the things. So all this stuff is going to Kala, and Kala is doing the mixing. I will go there and do that. So, and it look quite complicated, but it's not. And uh, <laughs> everything happens here is for Kala for all the live mixing and just for the, the live arranging. So. I will say. So, for example, I can put the drums. So, so um, I arranged that like this. So, I've got the bass, the hi hat, the snare, um, the, the real bass, it was the kick, and so on. So, basically, the, the uh, instruments are on the columns, and on the rows, there's different variations so like if, if you think in terms of mute groups like uh, before uh, uh, Harry introduced uh, like the, the rows are mute groups more or less yeah so and that for the live mixing I've got here so standard stuff like um, here delay um, reverb and so on Maybe put that I can arrange something. I can say, okay, I want to have the next part. Yes. This one. So 
I can mix all the things here. I can just bring the slider down. Oh, individually, set them up. Um, I've got some special things there for here, uh, filter. book we implement the scene management so you can record a scene it's like a state so I can call it uh, there are there like five going to the next and then it's kind of step step sound I guess that's the difference. Like uh, we're only switching on the uh, based on the MIDI clock, like, and you can set individually the points where the um, for each clip. But usually, like in, in a simple setup, they will all be on the same uh, amount of beats uh, where the, the switch happens. So, like the idea is that you um, of the program from from what I can tell is that you. Um, some switching, but you don't want to be, uh, you don't want to care about the timing yourself, so you have time while performing, performing to, to care for, I don't know, modulating filters and stuff like that. So, yeah, and then I go some special effect and stuff, like... Filter, some switching effects. A lot of them I wrote them in Faust, so and put them as LV2 and in into Kala. So for the mixing, so for example, each st mixer strip is one um, L42. So um, yeah, and then I've got two special things. Um, I wrote yes. About the scenes, uh, if I understood that correctly, a scene can be basically any subselection of clips, yeah. not just the the rows or something. So that's the main difference. And how do you configure these? You do it, and you record it like this, and that's it. Okay, you say I so want to have these I clips want and to have to save the actual now, state. Right? Okay, record it, and then you can you bring a new scene. You can give a name, and you. It's there. So I go on. Um, yeah, I got two really interesting um, um, applications um, I wrote in Faust, and especially um, with the new, uh, the brand new media sync function <laughs> from uh, Stefan. And um, so there are two things. One is. A a simple beat repeater actually, so it's like you can just um, where it where is it actually? Yeah, it's this one. This one. So you can you can change um, the length of the loop and. Like classical stuff. You can do uh, triolets as well. So and the nice thing is uh, lightning here, as I want. I sent straight from Faust. And then the second one is the cat sequencer. I call it. Um, it's this guy here. Um, so, and um, actually it's really easy, it's on the baseline for now, and it just starts with the timeline and it put kind of um, step sequencer on it, it's not a step sequencer, but it's, uh, there are eight steps and you can just mute them. So if I got the bass, I can change the bass on the fly, like this. Thank you. 
So, so you can just, well, you, you, you can mute sub-sequences as well. Like. So that's the whole setup actually. So what I'm presenting now is only the playback part and it has tons of other stuff like with Yoshimi and Super Lupa with the keyboard and there's an analog synthesizer, analog delay line um, and analog uh, loop station. It is synced with uh, MIDI clock and everything is rooted in color and stored in color and uh, mostly if I start color all the connections are there um, yeah and it's that's great so it's really really nice because um, on the stage you can just decide what to do if you have your parts and you can you are jungling with the parts and you can see what the people if the people like the parts and you can to really really or how to say, with heart, so m making music, so just arranging, mixing, changing the bass line, and doing some diversity stuff. So, <laughs> that's it for now. Ah, yeah, that's... So maybe, how much time we, do we have now? Okay. Maybe we go on Super Buckle a little bit more. So it has, um, we do that like this. So you have a matrix of, of clips. You can load samples um, with drag and drops, actually. Um, you can, here are the properties of each clip. You can say the amount of beats the, is the clip um, and you can um, prepare everything for your live session. Um, but there were a lot of really interesting things they were missing for the real live performance and we implement them, that with uh, Julian. Uh, we'll just show them. One is the playlist editor. Um, it's like you can just on double click change the song. So you are on the stage, you don't need to go to the menu and open and uh, look for a file somewhere. That's really, really handy. Um, they are the port manager, so now you can um, add as many ports as you like, so they are means audio outputs. Yep, because the idea is like you're only doing, uh, you're not doing a lot of signal processing or, or filters or whatever in, in, in this piece. You're just doing the, the whole uh, yeah, arrangement part. So you, what you want to be able to do is like do like all the, all the uh, other things uh, with other uh, check components or whatever. And so we need multiple outputs and need those to be configurable. That's yeah, why you want to have like some... No. So in that setup, um, I've got eight uh, stereo outputs. They are all going to Kala and mixed after. Then um, we implement as well the mute groups. That was very interesting before with uh, Harry. Um, 
So, in our but the, these are only classical mute groups in the term that the, it's a group of clips and uh, with the constraint that only one has to, or only one is allowed to be playing at a time. So yeah. if I start this one, no, we are So if I s start this one, this one will stop, and this one as well, but it's already stopped. That's it. So you can have a lot of clips, and if you trigger one clip, all the others will be mute. So especially with bass line or whatever, if you have different parts, uh, you don't want to have two bass lines at the same time. Um, that's the, the concept of mute groups. You can put them there. And um, yes, and we have the scenes. And uh, as told before, the scenes are just a state of whatever you did just right now. Something maybe really nice. You say, okay, I record the scene. And you call it later. Yeah, so uh, it's just a, a, a subset of the clips like that are available. And the way it's implemented right now, you can like only as soon as you say you want to be in a scene, the whole global set is, uh, the global state is uh, restored. Like uh, all the scenes that are, uh, all the clips that are in the scene are activated and the other ones are turned off. Exactly. So the best example would be uh, you have a chorus and a verse and um, maybe you want to have different parts from the verse in the chorus or whatever. But at one point you want the real, real chorus, so you can see and it's done. And to come back real quickly to your question from before, like there, there is no uh, internal way that um, really, uh, like it's it's just a set of a subset of clips, and the integrity is uh, like you can just record those in 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 a state where like. In some state where you're playing, a subset of your clips will be active, and then as soon as you say uh, you uh, you store the scene, then it will be taken from the from the state of the program at the time. So there is not more to it. All right. So I think we are done with Superbook. Do you think? You're right. Like it's it's in. Uh, it was in a very basic state, like one year ago when uh, Vince discovered the, the program, kind of, or like he, fa he found the GitHub repo and uh, he's uh, like, okay, we need more things to, uh, to make it practical for him on stage. So we started implementing those things uh, over the last year, uh, but it's still like in a, we're thinking a lot about like I don't have any any I don't know many people in the in the scene or or who are actually performing. So an interesting thing for me to know would be like what are interesting features. So I like we we are maintaining a um, a fork of the uh, original thing and pushing things upstream and uh, the state it's in right now. We have a lot of things in the issue tracker. So I, I was going to present a little bit like ideas for features and it would be interesting to. Uh, uh, talk about it, like what 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 you think would make most sense, or or just doesn't, or concept wise. So yeah, right. Uh, let me find the slides. No, I, I didn't. Do you have any questions? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What language is it written in? Would be one question, just out of curiosity. And the other question is for Wins. Uh, this matrix layout, is it something that you're accustomed to or you need that for, uh, to, for performance? Or is it because the hardware, the launch pad hardware and stuff like that is like this? Or would you rather go away from the matrix layout because I mean right now you have already have almost the flexibility that uh, you you don't need the matrix anymore or maybe not I mean you still have a kind of organization into different instruments which are the columns if I got that right and um, so 
is it essential for performance or would you I don't know. I go away from it? <laughs> I would go away from it, but I don't have uh, any idea. <laughs> well, it's really convenient because you can just say, in my case, I just post all my bass drums there, all my hi-hats there, and right. I know, okay, that's, that's, that's the first, and that's the cello, and yeah, I can... It's convenient, and it's go through through the line, and then it will be mixed. So I've got them like this actually, and so I know one line is one instrument, and uh, it's written in Python. It's it's Python and Qt. Qt. Yeah. Qt. Um, are you also thinking of implementing live sampling? Uh, you know, the, yeah, you, you're using. Super Looper and an analog looper, but it would be nice if it's integrated, right? It has it actually. It, it does. Um, it does have recording features, yeah. but uh, Vince is not but using them, so we we haven't been looking into those or how, how good they're working. We never even tested them, but it, theoretically, it, it does have that already. Yeah. The the first the first uh, idea was to bring it to live on stage capable software. So and um, it has the recording facilities, but I, I really didn't try them really. And I use Super Lupa because I know it. But it's the next step actually. It's looking uh, if it's working or not <laughs> with the recording. Yeah. yeah, but for now we were deciding really to focus on like the performance part and. Uh, like think of, of the samples as a black box that come from somewhere and they're already there and to optimize the um, the ways to interact with those devices and also I think like uh, we're, we're pretty much tied to the layout of this device with that's also the reason that you, you pick the software in the first place at some point because like it's, it's a nice device well the main I don't want this microphone <laughs> My 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 point is um, I don't want to do uh, something with computer on the stage because I don't have time to take the mouse and uh, looking for whatever and I uh, really need to be intuitive and uh, because the cello player is playing uh, something sometimes like one second changing. Um, that's the main point and uh, it's the only software for now I know. For Linux, um, which is, we can do that. So playing which is, samples, which is free, and uh, um, with the lightning, with the with the feedback, with the MIDI feedback there. So that's really important. Otherwise, I couldn't use it. So. Um, yeah. Vince, I'm yeah. just wondering, um, over here. Yeah. Uh, for your Super Dirt project, now has this workflow with Super Booker completely replaced your old one with hydrogen? Completely. Yeah. Um, is this uh, program you're talking about the Super Bounce or what's it called? Um, tight only to the launch pad or is there also this Akai or whatever? The Super Book. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, yeah. There's more devices with eight times eight. It buttons. was designed by, by the main developer for the launch pad, but actually works, I think, with a lot of others. It all depends. Um, of the specifications of the of the hardware, so which <laughs> how many um, um, uh, how many colors and stuff like that. So uh, to be more technical, if if that's interesting, like it's designed with the the or, or by the original author with this thing in mind, but it has theoretically the possibility to like it has a sort of we haven't shown that a, a de device manager. And it has a very nice feature uh, for binding those, uh, binding the uh, MIDI signals to the program actions. Like you can just, for instance, for the matrix, uh, you can just press some record button and then press them in a, in in a, a row, row yeah. and it will bind them accordingly. And also, if you, uh, if you, um, if you start a new song, um, it will allow you to uh, adjust the number of or the size of the matrix. It doesn't have to be square. It can be like any time, well, two-dimensional, but um, any uh, numbers. You can, you can change the, the size of the matrix, so as you like. But, 
probably you don't want too much because it, it doesn't fit on a screen more than, than eight is unpractical uh, in the state that it's right now, at least on the screen wise. But theoretically, it is possible to do it with other de devices, but it's very much optimized for, for this one. So uh, like, for instance, the feedback, it's, it's sending, um, I, I, I can't recall exactly, but it's like this device has built in software blinking. So it's some, some yeah. certain encoding that, that um, allows the blinking part and like um, it would, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, account for that in a way that like the software assumes in a way. Okay, I can, I can make the soft, I, I can make my output device blink. Yeah. Uh, it's hardware blinking and but, software uh, blinking. If your device does not allow for that, well, okay. I mean, you can say something else. You have uh, another color or whatever to distinguish the signal. It doesn't have to be blinking, of course, but that's just the way it was designed. So. It, it would somebody would have to try if it really works with another device nicely, but probably it works best with this one. That's the reason because I bought uh, the the launchpad because of this software. So actually, so <laughs> it was the other uh, way around. But it would, would be very interesting, like um, yeah, if somebody tried it with some uh, other uh, hardware. As device. it would be really really nice if. if Somebody are really interested in that and um, testing with other hardware and maybe or implement themselves a way of using other hardware or doing more. Um, okay, but before we, I think I think we should at some point get to an end. So I would no. start um, talking a, a very shortly about a, a couple of ideas. So um, first of all, like for for this. Uh, while I'm talking about it, I will, I will use the term sample just for an audio file, and clip will be like what, what is a super buccal wrapper of uh, the audio file, uh, including metadata, like, um, as you've noticed, like the, the length of the sample, um, it does not depend on the, uh, the length of the clip does not depend on the length of the sample, you have to, or you can set it there, like you can have an audio file that is uh, I don't know, way longer or like just a short click or a, a drum beat and, but you can uh, determine the the beat amount. Uh, that's what it's called currently. Um, and yeah, all the all the other settings. So, th so that is a clip, the audio file, the naked audio file is a sample for in terms of talking about it for right now. So then like, this is kind of a cute little graph, like what it's doing, it's, it's, uh, or the, of the states that the clips can be in. So once you're, um, like a, I'm using this hand symbol for you're pushing the button and assume you're starting in the stopped state. Um, once you, you, you trigger it, uh, it will be in kind of a starting state. So the uh, hardware is supposed to be, or that it's blinking, uh, signaling that the next toggle point, which is the terminology that I'm using for like the, the Usually it will be the start of the next bar. Um, the um, the clip will be actually playing back or start playing back, and we will be in the playing state. And the same uh, for the stopping. So uh, the the idea is it's it's basically theoretically independent for each clip. So you can do like like a, a basic use case would be okay. You have a song with a lot of shorter clips and maybe some drum uh, clip that would be long, like, uh, I don't know, four times the length and you have some fills that vary or something like that. Uh, and you want it, yeah, you want to, you want this variation in there, but uh, other, other, other clips maybe, yeah, you want to be able to change more quickly. Um, so, uh, yeah, like consider some, some uh, clip here with beat length four, um, what is happening is, uh, okay, I'm in the way of this. Uh, yeah, when the clip is very short, right now you have silence. Um, so like the use case would be some, some drum, uh, some kick maybe, um, but it is also possible uh, that you might want the silence not to be silence, but like, but to automatically loop it, but still be independently or independently you have this length point uh, where where you're toggling. So like that could be one idea, an option like, like yeah, to allow for the looping. 
and here. I hope that the pictures make, make it clear enough. Like, so also, you see this independence very nicely here, like the, the clip, clip length does not have to do anything or doesn't have to do anything uh, with the beat length. So it might be that there's some, whether it's wanted or not, you, you just have the option. But I, I, can't, I can't exactly tell you a use case, but yeah. So uh, another thing is, um, uh, the this uh, toggle concept like where where the point is where you want the program to be able to switch to the next uh, clip um, it's kind of tied to the length of uh, uh, the beat um, the beat length of the clip so if we go back to that example of a long uh, drum clip where uh, you have a lot of variation maybe or uh, some fills in there you maybe want to be able to still say, okay, I, I want to switch to another drum clip because I'm, I'm in part B, whatever, and there's double bass, or I, I don't know what. Um, but the whole, I don't know, eight bars, whatever you designed your clip to be for, are not still over. So you might want to be able to decouple the toggle point from the actual length of the playback. So, so if you're doing nothing, it would play back for uh, eight bars or whatever. But when you're switching, you could be able to switch uh, sooner. Like that, uh, that could be interesting to add. So you can like individually uh, specify the the toggling point and the length of the clip. Like I mean, it's, it's technical, but I don't know. It's still. Uh, I hope I hope you can understand it. If, if not, please stop me. Um, Uh, so another thing is um, the, 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 this concept of having uh, an independent, uh, well, or having a pu point where you push and the point where the clip switch um, being independent and the toggling point at some to some degree being tied to the MIDI clock or well is nice, but probably you also at some points want to have some indi or some some ability to actually uh, play back some sample immediately at, and, and yeah, be not restricted to have to wait for the next thing. So have something like, I don't know, some, some sample, I don't know what would be, would be a good, good use case, some scratch or whatever, yeah, that, that you want to be able to just immediately play back. So that would be some, um, uh, some other thing. Um, and there could also be variations of that, like, uh, um, a monophonic version where you just yeah, you push and it's played back and if you push while it's being played back your, your push is just ignored and yeah just like like it's displayed on the on the bottom in the graphics then you could also have some this monophonic version with some start stop behavior uh, okay I, I also thought of some other thing like uh, you could allow for, you could, you could make it be monophonic, but still um, allow for uh, interrupting if you specify this toggle point. Um, and then you could have some start-stop behavior. So when you push, you start the sample. When you push again, you stop it immediately. And then finally, you could have just, okay, screw it. I'm just playing back whenever you're playing, whenever you're pushing. And it's just, yeah. Uh, so that is another thing, and then like I don't know, another thing would be like uh, you could want to play back a, a, a sequence of triggers. So you just you just record kind of on stage. Okay, I want to I want to turn this clip on, and next I want to turn this clip on, and then I want to turn this group off or whatever. So that 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 could be some sort of feature. So like at some point you're saying, okay, I'm recording right now with some record button, then I'm doing three pushes and the program is memorizing them and actually only memorizing the order of execution and then playing it back uh, to the respective toggle points, if you will. And then uh, finally, and this, this is maybe related to what, what, 
what Harry has also been talking about, like a more some uh, a more uh, general view on on the concept of a group of clips. Um, but I'm not quite sure what other things there could be. But the the things that we were talking about were like well mute groups, classical mute mute groups, then uh, like a scene that we've already in there, uh, which, which is a group which should be started together at the, at the same time. But the way we have it right now, it's, it's a global scene in the sense that all the other uh, clips that are not in the scene are turned off, which I mentioned earlier. And then you could also have something like, okay, I'm individually having, I'm, I have samples for drum sets, uh, for, for, for kick, for bass, whatever. And then I could have a small local group of uh, kick, uh, snare, uh, hi-hat patterns that belong together. And I want to be able to turn them on, but not turn anything else off. So, so like just, just some sort of subgrouping of, uh, of clips. That could be also um, something. And then, yeah, OK, well, generally, OK, you might want to have something like be independent in, in terms of like what we were thinking about the use case was okay. Assume you have the classical mute group, like you have some bass, uh, some bass samples, and then you have some piano samples, whatever. And they're they're both uh, in mute groups, but you have something like okay, one of those bass samples and one of those piano samples really don't go along very well. Like like they're all and on all combinations they're sounding nice, but you don't want to have some some combination of bass and piano together because they're just not sounding nice. Let alone something like uh, AB parts or harmonics. Like we're not even thinking about that. But you could just have like the requirement for um, more constraints. But you could realize that with multiple mute groups in a sense. Um, but I'm not sure if if like really decoupling um, the uh, uh, the clip from from the whole uh, group would make more sense, but like so so I was thinking i don 't know maybe somebody else can think of it so so you could like just make some tiny API like just some some interface for what groups can react on and then implement those standard things and allow other people to to like just with a couple of lines of codes write write some custom group behavior or something like that. So that, those are actually basically the ideas. Then there's, how, how are we on the time actually? I don't know, it's quite late. Yeah, 39. Okay, I think we're 10 minutes over, so yeah. let's, let's cut that short. So uh, actually that's it. Uh, if, if somebody has, probably you're all hungry now and wanna go food, but if at some point somebody has ideas or right now questions about those features or, or ideas how like, Things could be, or concepts that could be better. Yeah, we'd be happy. Yeah. Um, yeah, one idea um, that I've been missing from a lot of looping and similar programs is uh, to have the, you call it the toral point, I think, um, to have that in, in the past. So, like, usually what happens, you, you link your toggle points to a certain beat length, and uh, if you then trigger it slightly before the, the trigger point, all is good. But if you're then slightly too late, then it waits for a whole new period. And it would be nice if you could make that configurable, like maybe if I'm just a bit over, then consider it the last beat, uh, tr trigger point. Or maybe you could say if I'm within the first half. So like, I don't know, you're recording a loop and you in the second half you decide, oh shit, I'm fucking up. I just want to use the first half. And then you say stop and it knows, hey, we're not at the full length. Am I making well, myself at least clear? I, I was thinking at least it would be nice to bypass the 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 behavior that the clip is waiting to the next bar. So if you are straight too late, maybe with the shortcut or something, just uh, unmute it. Yeah, the, the big question to me seems to be here, like, how do you want it to behave? Do you want like some manual override where you control that, okay, now I'm late, but I, I still want to change it. I, I want to ignore the the automatic thing that the program forces upon me. Or you could also 
be like, okay, if I'm like only that much late, then I can automatically recognize it and still do it. But that might also lead to some unexpected, like if somebody is used to like doing it very early, I don't know. So, so the question would be, what would be the best way to approach it? Like rather some manual override or some threshold that maybe in options is settable for the user or whatever. Yeah, no, yeah, that last last was what I was thinking of. Like, you can set it to be either uh, if you're just a bit late, start start the thing earlier, or you could set it like at the halfway point. So if I'm if I start or stop in the first half, then it means I want it actually in the in the past to start, and I, if it's in the second half, it's the normal behavior. Like those would be the two use cases I would find useful. Uh, so there was a question on IRC just there, can mute groups be nested? So can one con mute group control another set of mute groups and that actually influence the clips? Um, that is interesting because I, I'm not, I don't quite understand what the implication would be or how the behavior would be different from like, assume that you have a couple of nested mute groups. Um, Maybe I'm being stupid right now, but like from what I was thinking uh, of a regular mute group, the behavior would simply be like, okay, I'm uni unifying all those nested, and then it's the same. What what is the difference? <laughs> okay, so we, we just go okay, on with go the on. next question, and you come back to us. Go on. Okay. So currently you trigger uh, clips, audio clips. Are you considering triggering uh, effects, for example, specialization effects or uh, transformations also? Well, you are triggering MIDI actually. So you can as well, um, you can, can go out of Superbubble mm. and do whatever you want with MIDI. So if you have a plug-in. So how I understand it, we're, we're not, we're not uh, controlling effects with Superbuckle itself. So that that's, if you if you consider the setup that Vince is using, he's like we we got like eight outputs out of Superbuckle. They're going uh, in, in Kana. some uh, in Kala in to wherever I don't know. Effects, or to Ardua uh, if you like to record whatever. And then at that point, uh, those those are usually also uh, MIDI controllable. So the controlling of effects, the way the setup uh, works right now is, is handled there. And we haven't really been thinking a lot about um, integrating this or, yeah, but yeah. But you can do really nice things like you can just record on a MIDI track your performance with good tractor or Ardu or whatever, and just play it back and it will work. You can go and have a beer. <laughs> So there was no follow-up from IRC yet, but Falk Jess asked, how often has Carla crashed so far? Sorry? How, how often has Carla crashed so far? It has never crashed now on the stage. <laughs> uh, sometimes it doesn't work with, um, with the external media hardware, or I don't know, the, the um, connections are lost. I don't know really why. But mostly it works. Actually, yeah. About the topic, uh, the toggle point being in the past, uh, how about doing it with uh, a really hard velocity? So if you really missed it and you really want to have it there, <laughs> just wow. hit it very hard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that could be that's, a really nice gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a very, very good idea. The problem with the current setup that Vince is using right now, I don't think that the device is uh, sensitive to um, no, they aren't. velocity. But you can, you can, uh, Van Pui, the main developer, uh, uh, implement the functionality of uh, velocity sensitive. Uh, and yeah, for example. So it is implemented now in Superbook, so you can use. I haven't tried it now. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure this, that you can actually, but well, it's a totally different uh, point to to tie this to the. Um, I mean that that would of course requ require custom implementation in terms of like okay uh, a cutoff for the velocity and then ignore the 
like you could think of some some stupid function even or whatever that you um, like the harder you push the further your um being late uh, is uh, <laughs> like work work oh, whatever yeah all right so one note from IRC from Fampuyu says that the recording feature is fully working and it's tested with a generic keyboard. So thanks for that testing. Amazing. There's also a follow-up question to the nested mute groups. So Robin asks, nested groups offers more flexibility. Consider group A snare and kick, group two uh, or B being hi-hat and cowbell, group three hi-hat and cymbals, and then you kind of like group these subgroups together in like super groups, as in like B1 is A1 and A2 and B2 is A1 and A3. Basically have kicks and different like parts of a drum kit individually grouped. like grouped yeah. into into uh, like larger groups to control the whole drum kit in different kinds ah, of scenarios. Ah, yes, like hierarchy. Uh, something yeah, like. I think you'd, like your scenes feature maybe s covers part of this in a way, At in, least in a different way. Yeah. 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 Um, you can't do that stuff without Harky anyway. Hi hat cow singer. Yeah, okay, yeah. That was the question. <laughs> So is it is it actually because originally from what I remembered it was nested mute groups so is it tied to the mute group functionality or rather the scene that things that belong together because I can of course remember it, it makes sense like you, you trigger one if you think of um, not global uh, scene groups in, in terms of where you just turn on the groups and turn everything else off um, it would make sense to have like a local subgroup turn that on turn on another local subgroup on and then have some supergroup like that, um, yeah, the, uh, the yeah, exactly, and then turn like all of the subgroups on, but with a with a mute group thing, um, which conceptually is like to okay, uh, you can't even t uh, or there is no concept for triggering a mute group, for, from what we've been thinking about it. Like it's there's just like you trigger one of the clips inside of the group, and the function is that it turns off all the others. So in, in case of, of nested, I don't know what the yeah what to do. Yeah. So but well, I'm assuming that uh, we're talking about like the other sort of uh, group, not mute groups, but. But scenes. I think it's a scene thing. That's this yeah. But but because maybe the they're dual in a mathematical sense or. I've <laughs> But the mute group, they are really, really, really important on stage because uh, if you have two or three different bass line, you never ever want to have all the three playing at the same time since the sound engineer is crying and uh, everybody is going out. So, um, Any questions? Yes, yeah, small addition to the, uh, the total point thing. Like the use case I'm thinking of is, is just being able to start and stop uh, uh, stuff at the moment and have the, the computer understand that you want it to be actually in sync. So so you're not consciously thinking, oh, I was a little bit late, so I'll hit it a bit harder. Is that you, your only thing you're thinking is, I want my things to start now. And like usually people who are used to loops, they just do it a bit earlier because that's how they've been trained. Like otherwise it doesn't work, but that's actually not a natural way of making music. That's That's... You have to consciously spend a little bit of brain power to, oh, I have to be a bit earlier. Whereas it, it would be nice if you could just, oh. you know, be in the moment, be just. I'm sure there are some cases for that, but uh, in that case, you are you are arranging your song on the fly, so you are thinking about many loops at the same time. So you say, okay, I want with this part, with this part, with this part, so. Yeah, maybe you might want to trigger all them at the same time, but actually you don't need, you can just... Also, I yeah. think a, a key thing is like the way that, that the loops are used in the setup. So the, um, the concept, how I understand it is, or at least how we're using it and, and mostly the way we're, we were thinking about it is, is you rather have longer loops that don't resemble like one snare beat or whatever, or one, one sound that you want to play instantly or, or whatever, but rather a very long period of, um, like maybe even a, a, a part of a song, um, like eight bars or so. And those are really long time spans. And, uh, and the way that Vince is using them from the, the way I know, understand it is mostly um, 
okay, there's the part, and then you can react to the crowd in a way, okay, that they're really, uh, you notice they're responding to it, so you're letting it run a little bit longer, and at some point you decide, okay, and now I'm going to the B part, or the next part, whatever. So this is a decision that is not very time critical in a way. You, you just say, okay, I'm hitting it now, and this is just one small uh, action, and mostly you're focusing on, okay, what, what the micromanagement of the effects in a way of, uh, okay, I'm, I'm playing around with the... Uh, with, uh, with the effects, and especially playing whatever. That's the, that's the idea, so you, you can arrange your song and prepare and do other stuff at the same time, so you don't have to... So, yeah. for example, I want to change uh, to the next part of the scene, and then I can play with the guitar on the first. So, that's, that's okay. the idea. I think it's, it's time, more or less, for lunch. So if there's somebody yeah. has a really pressing question at hand, um, maybe one last or so, one more. Yeah. But I think it's, it's, it's we're all fine. hungry just by now. Otherwise, just come to us and... Yeah, yeah you can come later. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, three o'clock is the next slot, and then we're going to have, well, here, the sound lab and the seminar room. So here is going to be, uh, at the main hall, uh, plug-in programming with Faust, and in the seminar room, as uh, pure data, the haptic hand-loop things, and essential aspects of mixing in the sound lab.